a heartfelt welcome to the Rookie European Championship 2021. Today, we are live streaming from Munich, from the Kessel House, and we're going to see the best athletes from the 2020 European ranking. This year, it's going to be a new format for the international rookie competition. But before we'll get into this one, I'll say hi to Troy Mannering, the commentator and my colleague. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, Pia. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, looking forward to this one. I mean, this is the rookies. These are the guys that are going to be the new blood in uh, timber sports that are coming up. And this uh, European rookie championships in Munich with an audience, it's going to be fantastic. So we're going to see the future of the sport coming up right now. I'm very keen for this one. And we'll have a field reporter as well. Her name is Lisa, and she's right now in the Kessel House in Munich. And we'll say hi to her now. Hello and welcome to Steel Timber Sports Rookie Re European Championships in Germany, Munich, Motor World Kessel House. Formerly, turbines, tractors, and train engines were produced here. Afterwards, it was used for maintaining trains for about 70 years. But now, it's an event venue, and today we're gonna have this amazing location to take place for the Rookie European Championships. I'm incredibly excited, but before we start, back to Troy and Pia. There are 12 top newcomers from nine different countries, and I mean the athletes, that's all what it's about, and we're going to have a closer look to them now. Right. Are you excited? I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm super excited. Like I said, this is the future of the sport of uh, um, timber sports. And uh, I mean, normally we're seeing older athletes coming out of the rookie uh, division. But this time, our youngest athlete is 17 years old and our oldest is 24. So, I mean, there's a lot of time for these guys to blossom and develop as timber sport athletes. So, yeah, let's take a look at who we got coming up our way. So Sebastian Bato, uh, 20 years young, coming out of France. He was 12th at the Six Nations Rookie Cup recently. Um, and, uh, you know, the French have a fantastic list of athletes already. And you could see there's plenty of quality coming out of their system. Um, they've got numerous clubs they actually train with. And, uh, and uh, you'll see a lot of these athletes um, associated with these clubs. Uh, another one, Lucas Wagesreiter, 21 years old, out of Austria. He was fifth at the Czech International Rookie Cup 2020. He was sixth at the Six Nations Rookie Cup and fourth at the Austrian Rookie Cup. So he's got a bit of a pedigree behind him as he steps into action here today. Then coming up next, we have Mikhail Stonichka, or Skonichka, excuse me, 25 years old. Excuse me, I misspoke earlier. Our oldest athlete, 25 by the looks of it, coming from the Czech Republic. And he was 10th at the Czech International Rookie Cup. And uh, you could see there, 12th place for the European ranking overall. Oh, a nice view from our crane cam there on the stage as we go down to our next and another Frenchman, Loïc Vincent, 22 years old, uh, Six Nations Rookie Cup third place, Rookie World Championships from Sweden in 2019. He got fifth, so he's a man definitely to keep an eye out for, and he also has the rookie national record for the standing block chop, so he is a solid axeman, and uh, we'll uh, have a close look at that when we get to the standing block chop in competition today. Then we have Edvin Carlsson from Sweden. Now you would expect Sweden has some solid athletes coming out of that country as well. 21 years old. He was 11th at the Six Nations Rookie Cup and uh, he actually holds the world record for rookies in stock saw with a 986. So uh, that is a big number for a young man. Um, our next athlete coming up would uh, should be Robin Haas from Switzerland. There he is. Uh, not a ton of information on Robin. 25 years old. He was fourth at the Six Nations Rookie Cup. So uh, he's definitely one to keep a close eye on. And this is, as you see there on screen, his first appearance in an international rookie championship. So this is an opportunity for him to cut his teeth against some of the best in the world. 
Then we have Mikael Perin from Italy. Czech International Rookie Cup, he got fourth place. At the Six Nations Rookie Cup, he got eighth place. That was uh, here in Munich before we all went into lockdown, and we were glad to have them here. He is a solid competitor, very, very strong, really precise with the axe. Then we have Alessandro Ciaponi, 23 years old, coming from Italy. He holds the national record for the underhand chop at 24.63, and he got eighth place at the Czech International Rookie Cup, fourth place at the European Rookie, uh, in European Rookie Rankings. So another guy to keep a close eye on. So then we have... Mikolaj Grunwald, 17 years young, coming from Poland. He is the Polish Rookie Championship silver medalist from 2021, got second place. He holds the national rookie record for stock saw with an 11.21. So a really solid competitor here as well. And as I said earlier, these are all young, young guys that are coming up through the system and developing into really, really strong competitors. Coming out of the Czech Republic, 22-year-old Matthias Klima. He is a really, really good chopper. Keep a close eye on him when it comes to the underhand chop and standing block chop. He's very solid in both these disciplines. Um, he is the winner of the Czech International Rookie Cup. And he is he was seventh at the Rookie World Championships in 2019. So he does have some international qualification. And uh, yeah. He's going to bring that to bear here. Here's a man that everybody's going to be keeping a very close eye on, though. Switzerland's Oliver Reinhardt, 21 years old, also a very good chopper, good with the axe in his hand. He was first at the Six Nations Rookie Cup in 19 and 21. He was first at the French Rookie Championships in 2021 and first at the Swiss Rookie Championships in 2020. He is a perennial winner. And then we have... Our one and only German in the mix here, unless I misread something earlier on, Marcel Steinkemper, 24 years old, ninth place at the Six Nations Rookie Cup. He's the German newcomer champion, first place in 2021, and he also won the Ford Transit German Rookie Cup. Also, this guy has a lot under his belt as well. And I mean, just reading those out, you saw that there's a ton of talent coming in, and this is going to be a really fun competition to watch. And also, there are going to be a lot of difference in their, in their professionality. So, today we're going to watch an international rookie championship, which is different from a normal rookie championship. What is different? The round format. It's held in a round format, and this time we've got three, time, three rounds, not two. This is because the springboard discipline is added in the last, but all you need to know about the competition format of today is gonna follow now. The Steel Timber Sports Rookie International Championship competition. The International Rookie Championships are held in a three round elimination format. In the first round, all rookies compete in two disciplines, the underhand chop and the stock saw. The times achieved will be converted into points upon completion of each discipline. In round one, a single point difference applies in each event. Thus, the fastest athlete receives points equal to the number of athletes in the competition and the slowest only one point. Any rule infraction will result in a disqualification and the athlete will receive zero points for that discipline. At the end of the first round, the athletes with the lowest scores are eliminated. Only eight athletes make it to the second round. In the second round, the remaining athletes compete in the standing block chop and the single buck for increased points. With two points difference between placings, the fastest athlete now receives 16 points and the slowest receives two. The two athletes with the lowest total points are eliminated at the end of round two. Only the top six reach the third round. In the third round, anything is still possible on the springboard as an increased score of three points between positions applies in this final round. The fastest athlete can score eight 18 points in the springboard, the slowest receives three points. The athlete who achieves the highest total score across all three rounds is the new champion. We're gonna start right into it, into the first discipline, which is, as you might know, the underhand job. As you might imagine, the tool for this one is the axe, and all you need to know about the axe and the discipline is gonna follow now. Have fun. Underhand chop. 
In the past, the underhand chop technique was used to split logs. Standing on a horizontally anchored block, the athletes use an axe to cut through a 30 centimeter log. The block has to be worked from both sides. The axes used in timber sports definitely can't be bought at your local hardware store. Made from special steel, the blade is hand sanded with an angle of 13 to 16 degrees. It's custom built and carefully adjusted for each competition. The weight is around three kilos and it's about 80 centimeters long. The blade is so sharp that you could shave with it. In the first round, we have six heats. In the first heat, Sebastien Bateau is going to go up against Lukas Vargas Reitner. In the second heat, Michael Skornitschka is going to compete against Loire Monson. In the third heat, Edwin Carlson against Robin Haas. In the fourth heat, the two Italian guys from this competition are going to compete, Michel Perrin and Alessandro Giapponi. In the fifth heat, Mikola Grönwald and Matthias Klima. And in the sixth heat, Oliver Reinhardt is going to go up against Marcel Steinkämpfer. Kemper, I'm sorry. So we'll start right into it and going to say goodbye to, new year, to you now and wish you much fun watching the first discipline, right? Yeah, let's get the action on. Yeah. All right, well, there you see our stage set up as the athletes will come out shortly. And as Pia mentioned, we are starting things off with the underhand chop. And uh, we did mention this off the top, but uh, just to clarify a little bit, uh, a new discipline in the rookie championships this time around will be the springboard. It'll be a single board springboard, but that's at the very end in round number three. Before then, the guys need to accumulate some points to get through these first two rounds. And as you uh, heard, round one will be the underhand chop, which is what we're having right now. And stock saw, then round two will be standing block chop and the single buck with an assistant. So that is a change from last year as well. Well, and here we Andy. go with heat number one. Ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. So there you see Sebastian Bateau and Lucas Vargas Reita on the other side there in the red shirt. And both these guys getting right into it, slabbing off some nice big chunks from those blocks underneath them. Very important here. And uh, what you see often is... Uh, the guys wanting to be really careful about where they're cutting and if they cut into those footholds that they're standing on, then there could be a DQ. So you want to keep an eye on if a flag hits the ground during the test. Now, another thing that's really key here is turning around on the log, which you just saw them do, both of them now working on the backside of their log and trying to get through in the fastest time possible. And we have a new personal best for Lucas Vagasleiter, who's gotten through in 33.60 seconds. Very, very nice job. His personal best previously was 34.50, oh, so that is a nice improvement. This is, of course, only a temporary and inefficient time until our head judge gives us the thumbs up for both of these stands. And we just saw Sebastian Bateau come through in a 44.94, so not much of an improvement there. Okay, both cuts are good. All right, so that means our times are locked in and official. Lukas Vragesreiter with a new personal best of 33-34 as we take a look back here at the first cuts they've gone into. A really nice job by both of these guys to get right into it. Lukas Vragesreiter, though, obviously making some improvements in how he approaches this over the offseason. So a good job by him to improve on his time. And you're going to see uh, in a lot of cases where a guy's time may not be world record setting or anything like that, but he'll make an improvement and get to a personal best. This is something that we really enjoy seeing from any athlete that's in steel timber sports because it means that they're taking steps to the next level of each of these disciplines. But a great job by that young man right there, Lucas Vargas Reita with a 33-34 official personal best now. And you can see in the uh, blue light, 
of the moon there at the Kessel House, the crew setting up the stage. It's almost like a Formula One crew. We'll uh, hopefully get a chance to see these guys in action a little bit later on, but they really do a fantastic job, and it's such an important job, too, to make sure that that stage is prepared quickly for our television audience as well as safely for our athletes. And our next pairing coming out right now, Mikhail Skonichka is going up against Luik Voisson. So Mikhail Skonichka with uh, 25 years old, our oldest competitor in the rookies group. 120 kilograms, a meter, 83 tall, big boy, strong. Plenty of power in his hits. Athletes, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. So let's see if Loic Voisson, right there, and for you seeing his feet, can. Uh, oh, excuse me. Loic is on the other side. Let's see if uh, he can make some improvements on his underhand chop. He's very strong in the standing block chop, and wow, a nice quick turnaround. And he is on the other side of his block already. And Skornichka has now just turned over about four or five hits behind Luik Voisson. So obviously Voisson has been doing some off-season work as well. These guys highly motivated. Look at that. He is through in 26.08. What a great time for the Frenchman. And he moves to the top of the leaderboard. His personal best on this discipline, by the way, 24.11. So he's a little bit slower than personal best. But faster than the rest of the crew so far. And Skornichka with a time of 34.99. And as always, until we get the thumbs up on both stands from our judges, these are inofficial times. All right, both cuts are good. Good start by the Frenchman though. First place so far in the results of underhand chop, but we do have several more heats to go. But uh, it's a nice position for him to be in. He set a good starting time of 2581 after the adjustment. So uh, as we take a look back here, and he is right there in front of you. Nice job though by both of these guys actually. You could see the power from Skornichka though. He just throws everything into it. The one thing I would say about Skornichka though is he is not getting as much upswing and power through the axe on the way down, but it's also a very important factor to be accurate with your hits so that your axe doesn't get stuck in that block so often. So you have to kind of balance between the power and really throwing the head of the axe at that block and then getting it stuck, which takes a lot of effort to get it out of there. And wow, that final stroke from Voinson went straight through there. What a nice cut for him. All right, so far so good. And uh, the only thing that we need to see here is the underhand chop standing so far. Vagasleite in second place with a personal best. Loic Voisson with the very fast time, seven and change, uh, faster than spot number two. So that's a very good start for him, as I said, as we get our next pairing coming out onto stage. And that is Edvin Carlsen from Sweden going up against Robin Haas from Switzerland. Ah, the serious faces. Gotta love it. Personal best for Edvin Carlsen. There you see is a pretty solid 2873. Robin Haas, a slight advantage on personal best timing with a 2652. But we should admit a little bit here that those personal bests can come under circumstances for one guy that are different from another guy. And Effie, so, you ready. know, depending on how that Stand wood is reacting on a day, timber. it'll change a personal best. Three, Let's see how the two, wood reacts today. One, go! Edwin Carlson on the far side in yellow. Robin Haas right there in the red. Both these guys getting into those blocks nicely. Ooh, a big stick by Carlson, though. And as I said, you know, you get that axe stuck in there and it requires a lot of effort to get it out. But both of them moving over to the other side. Nice and even with each other. This could be a good battle right down to the wire as we're just passing the 25 second mark here. Nice slabs coming out of the block there from Robin Haas. 
And it's going to be Carlson through in 29.67. Not quite as fast as time, but there's still the adjustment to be had. And Robin Haas gets through in a 34.80. So pretty solid all around. Robin Haas slips into fourth place with that time unadjusted so far. Edwin Carlson moves up into second place and we will wait for the thumbs up. All right, both cuts are good. All right, so looking at the, uh, the start for both of these guys, it was a really good solid start. One thing that you're gonna notice between the rookies and the pros is very often the speed at which the ax head moves is a little bit more concentrated, a little bit more consequent by the rookies. They wanna make sure they're getting their hits really properly and with time and experience, the head speed of that ax will increase and you'll still see them hitting accurately. But it was a great job by both of these guys. However, at the end of the day, it was these final couple of blows here by Edvin Carlson from Sweden, really displaying the nation's colors on his uniform very well there. Uh, there's no doubt about where he's coming from, so he is your winner in that heat. And there we see now the ranking. Edvin Carlson slips into second place and Robin Haas in fourth. He's in a solid position, eight seconds off pace. Loic Voisson still with the fastest time in the underhand chop so far. And uh, it's looking good. And we are going to go over to Lisa, who is with Edvin Carlson right now. Edvin Carlson, hello. Great performance. How are you feeling today? Feeling pretty good. <laughs> yeah. You did a pretty great job. Is there a particular discipline you're looking forward to? You do, you're doing the, likely the most? I'm looking forward to the standing block. That would be good. All right. We wish you all the best luck. Thank you. Thank you. Now, back to Pia and Troy. All right, so back on stage here, getting ready for our next heat. It's going to be heat number four with Mikel Perin and Alessandro Ciapponi. As uh, Pia said earlier on, a couple of Italians going up against each other. So they'll definitely have the Italian solidarity and that uh, wanting each of them to do well. But you know that once they're on stage, it's like brothers, you know, they're going to fight for every ounce of food on the table. And uh, yeah. Let's see how this boils down between these two Italians. See the size difference between these two gentlemen. Michael Perrin, a bigger boy at 190 as opposed to 185 for Giappone. Michael Perrin has got a, excuse me, 180, even less, 17 centimeters shorter. And Perrin has Etsy. an absolutely Ready. fantastic style Stand in this discipline. Here we go. Timber. Three, two, one, go! Big slab right away by Perrin. And both of them hitting nicely. Perrin with a little stick there. And now Ciapponi with a little stick. And Perrin with another one. He's going to want to make sure that uh, he gets things going. Ciapponi over to the other side before Perrin. Oh, Perrin could be in trouble here. Chiapone hitting so well today. Look at how accurate his hits are. Bang on the mark each and every time. Chiapone, a very nice cutter here on this axe. And boy, he is solid. But Perrin coming with some strong movement from behind. But he doesn't have enough. And it's going to be Chiapone in 31-37. Perrin in 33-38. Oh, man. I might have thrown my quarters down on the wrong horse there. I thought Perrin was definitely going to do it. We've seen him cut so well on the underhand chop in the past, but it's Chiapone with an absolutely fantastic run here. Good job. Michael Perrin with a 35-27. Right. Both cuts are good. And Alessandro Chiapone with a 31-13 after adjustment. So Chiapone moves into third place in the rankings. And Michael Perrin is down in seventh place. So he is going to need to come on strong in the stock saw, the next discipline. But this is actually uh, Chiapone's 
favorite discipline. He has the national record for underhand chop of 24.63. He didn't come uh, that close to breaking that record here today, but a great job even with that axe getting stuck in there on a couple of occasions, but a really, really nice cut by Chia Pony. Yeah, and that's some happy right there. So results so far after four heats in the underhand chop and Louis Voisson still on top with a really, really solid time of 25.81. Edvin Carlson just behind by 3.68 sections with a 29.49. And Chiapponi sitting not that far back with a 31.13. As we get ready for heat number five between Mikolai Grunwald and Matthias Klima. Mikolai Grunwald will be on the left-hand side of your screen on stand A. Matthias Klima on the right-hand side on stand B. Matthias Klima is a good chopper. Matthias looking to do well on both the chopping disciplines, underhand and standing block chop. Mikolai Grunwald has the Andy, national rookie record ready. for stock saw, by the way. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Uh, guys starting opposite each other on the blocks. Matthias Grunwald looking to face our audience and... Uh, Machas Klima now. Ooh, that was quick getting over to the other side by Machas Klima. He started with his back to the audience, but now moves over to the front side, hitting well. Grunwald there from the overhead camera. Oh my goodness, look at the time by Klima. Yeah, to say that he's a good chopper would be an understatement. 20.46, a personal best and the fastest time of the day. Grunwald struggling on the backside of his block, gets three or four stuck axes there finally gets through in 38.40. He's going to be disappointed with that time. His personal best is 24.45 in this discipline. And uh, But that man right there, Matthias Klima, he's got to be happy with that. He just bested his personal best by three seconds and change. All right. Both cuts are good. So it's official. Matthias Klima takes over the top spot with a personal best of 20.24. Loic Voinsant holding on to second place with a 25.81. But you got to say, Matthias Klima just obliterated that time. What a great start by him in the underhand chop. Uh, you can see there the axe was really, really low down. And then it came very high up. And then it got stuck a couple of times. So that's uh, going to cause time problems for these guys as they try and wrench the axe out of the block. But again, this all comes from time, experience, and discipline with the axe. Not putting too much power into it to make sure you get clean cuts there. And I do believe Lisa is with Mikai, uh, Mikolai Grunwald at the, the moment. We'll check the standings here first. There you see Matthias Klima with a personal best of 2024. 20, Voinsant holding on to second place now and Carlson slips down into third place. And now we're going to go to Lisa who is with Grunwald. Mikael Grunwald. Great performance. How are you feeling? Not bad, not good. I think it's okay. All right. Is there a discipline you like the most, except for this one? I think I like standing block chop because very most and fast, strong discipline, this competition. All right. Beautiful. Thank you. So much luck. Thank you. And now, back to Troy and Pia. All right, so Mikael Grunwald uh, looking forward to the, uh, yeah, the standing block chop. It's his favorite, so hopefully he'll do well there, but he needs to make it through this first round to get to the second round, and uh, he is currently sitting in ninth place, so with one more heat to go, he's a little bit on the bubble. Let's see how Oliver Reinhardt and Marcel Steinkemper do against each other. That is our next heat coming up. See a little bit of the character in Marcel Steinkemper there, hey? 
The eyes say, I'm going to mess with you in the back room. <laughs> I'll bet you, I'll bet you, he is a bit of a joker. Oliver Reinhardt, this guy is a perennial winner, as I mentioned off the top of the show. He got first place in all of the following events, the Six Nations Rookie Cup, the French Rookie Cup, and, or the Rookie Championships, Essie. and the Swiss Rookie Championships. Ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Big hits by both of these guys. Steinkemper, a very, very strong competitor. Oliver Reinhardt, as we know, has built himself a winning pedigree through the last few years as a rookie. And now they've both moved over to the other side. This is a nicely matched up battle between these two so far. A little bit of a stick by Steinkemper, though. And Oliver Reinhardt looks like he might be close, and he is through in a 22-9-6. Nicely done. That puts him in second place at the moment. Steinkemper still battling to try and get through. Ooh, good job that he didn't take a swing when his foot was on the floor. That could be a DQ, but he got it back up on top and did that final swing through, and that gives him a time of 33-41. So Marcel Steinkemper in sixth place at the moment in underhand shot, but a great job by Oliver Reinhardt to earn himself some points there and move into second place in the underhand. Okay, both cuts are good. All right, so we saw right off the start for both of these guys, they were hitting nicely and almost intact with each other. And then it was Oliver Reinhardt who just started to throw the ax a little bit faster. He has gained a lot of experience over the last few years, been competing for a good five to six years and, and being successful throughout. And you could see that log was just starting to wiggle a little bit. And then it was one, two more blows here from this view that uh, we got to see him break through there with a really nice final hit. And that was it right there. Got a little bit stuck, took an extra one just to be safe. And that one swung through nicely. And it was Marcel Steinkemper that had to battle a little bit to try and play catch. Up, but now we have some results to look at for our underhand chop standings. And uh, yeah, Matthias Klima on top with Oliver Reinhardt right behind, four seconds off the pace. Loic Voinson just behind them. And those are our top three guys in the underhand chop so far. And that will be our overall ranking as well. What a round. That was quite a lot of a change of the first yeah. position, wasn't it? Absolutely. I mean, like I said, you know, these guys are running on adrenaline and, and uh, youth and vim and vigor. And, uh, and you saw that already in this, this first set of, uh, of heats. Uh, they're really ready to go for it. And, yeah. You know, we saw some expecta expected wins with Oliver Reinhardt right there. Matthias Klima did a great job as well. So, uh, so far, so good for our first heats in round number one. This is crazy. And two personal bests as well. Like, the motivation is out there. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Let's maybe uh, take a look back. I think, I think if I'm hearing right, we have a side-by-side -side look here. And it's Oliver Reinhardt who had the second fastest time in a comparison up against Matthias Klima, who was the fastest time of the day. Take a look at how quickly both of these guys are working with the axe, but they're also bringing the axe pretty high up. Oliver Reinhardt, not quite so much as Matthias Klima, but Matthias Klima was one and a half, maybe two strokes ahead of Reinhardt coming around to the other side. And that was a decision maker for him as well. As you could see, he had a really nice block there and that final hit was really good. And perhaps Reinhardt would have been a notch faster had that second to last hit been just a hair heavier. He might have gotten through that log because you can see it did come apart. And maybe if, uh, you know, he hadn't taken that last swing, it would have been yeah. fair. But, you know, all's fair in love and war, as they say. Yeah, right? well, that's life. That's life. <laughs> so that was quite an interesting round one, but I'm, I'm very keen for round two, I got to say. And now... As I just heard. Uh. 
That was quick. There was a very quick commercial. <laughs> I want one of those mowers for my lawn. <laughs> I get bored mowing the lawn on my own every day. <laughs> so the next discipline is the stock stock saw. Um, it's a pretty, it's a tough one. What uh, what I've heard, it's a it pretty tough be. one. It can be, yeah. It's not all about uh, uh, vim and vigor and power this time around. The guys have to have a little bit of technique as well. But I'm guessing that we're going to hear a little bit about that now too as well. Yeah. Stock saw. After the starting shot, the contestants have to cut two wooden discs, so-called cookies, within a 10 centimeter mark. One downward and one upward. The attempt is only valid when both discs have been cut off completely and within the marks. The steel MS661CM stock saw is used in steel timber sports as the ultimate test of operator's skill. Designed for the toughest jobs in forestry, it produces approximately 7.3 horsepower, has a displacement of 91.1 cc and weighs 7.4 kilograms. To ensure evenly and fairly matched saws, professional steel technicians prepare and test the saws before each competition. The next round is coming up. We're in the first heat, Sébastien Bateau, again against Mikhail Skornitschka. In the second heat, Laura Vincent against Michel Perrin. In the third heat, Mikola Grönwald competing against Matthias Klima. In the fourth heat, Oliver Reinhardt against the Italian guy, Alessandro Ciapponi. In the fifth heat, two German-speaking guys, Lucas Wagen, a Vargas Reiter against Marcel Steinkemper and in the last heat, Robin Haas against Edwin Carlson. That last heat, by the way, we've seen in the Six Nations Rookie Cup. Uh, uh, they've uh, gone head to head before as well. And uh, we'll get on stage here with our stock saw. Now, as you mentioned earlier on, Pia, it's not really an easy discipline, and, and it's not because the guys have to use a lot of power or strength or anything in this particular discipline. What's important here is their technique because with the stock saw, if you push too hard down on that saw, it's going to stall and uh, you have to cut these cookies nice and clean. Looking for two cookies and there you see Sebastian Bateau. He started our competition off in the underhand shop, did well, and now he will start off the second set of heats here in round one with the stock saw. And Mikhail Skonichka, again. Warm up. These Your guys saw. looking forward to getting into competition here. And each time these rookies update and each time they get uh, a little bit better and each time they gain a little bit of experience, they come closer to becoming uh, pros and joining the international pro competitions. Let's see and how we do with ready. the stock saw. Here we go. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. All right, two different techniques here. As you see, Bato on the left-hand side using the entire saw blade motor and all. And Skornichka on the back side there with a nice upstroke. Oh, my goodness, how close was that? I'm saying that the time on the left is maybe not exactly 100% on top of it. We see Sebastian Bato with a 1371. Maybe it was a time on the right. We have to wait for an adjustment, but I believe uh, that time of seven and change was maybe a bit too fast because both right. of them were Rose really Gus. close. Oh, good. We're going to have to wait for an actual official... Uh, timing update here on our screens. Yes, I got it. Sebastian Bato with a 13.54. Mikhail Skonichka with a 13.56. Oh my goodness. Two hundredths of a second difference between these two guys. How incredible was that? Let's take a look back here. So, right there you can see Bato. A little bit of a hover above the log to try and get that position. Remember, they only have 10 centimeters that they have to cut two cookies from now. Difference here is that uh, Skornichka's got a really thin first cookie, very, very nicely targeted on the upstring, and then barely any downswing at all before they transition to cutting upwards. Right there, though, a small dip in by the tip of the blade, and you see it disappear a little bit into the log. That slows things down a bit, but nevertheless, some good times to start the competition off for both of these guys. 
No personal best thus far as both of them are around the 11 second mark for the stock saw. And uh, you can see right away different styles, different pressures, different times. All right. Next up, we have Loïc Voisson going up against Michael Perrine. So a Frenchman and an Italian battling in the next heat. So, Pia, any thoughts on that first heat? Just uh, going to throw you into the fire here and, and see what you thought as, uh, as, uh, as sort of a newcomer to the sport. I mean, what, what are your thoughts there? I'm, I'm pretty amazed by the fastness they, they got to do that. It's, it's crazy in my eyes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know if I could cut a, a log half the size of what they're cutting in uh, double the time that they're cutting. I mean, it's pretty impressive altogether. Now we see Mikael Perrin there, and uh, as he is getting ready with his saw, and Loïc Voisson on stage Warm as up. well. Your saw. Now we see Loïc. Athletes, ready! Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Oh, nice start by both of these guys. Targeting very well to get the saw up. Bit of a thick cookie there on that one side and on the upstroke. Nice transition. It's a bit of a thinner one there for Louis Voisson. Oh, and Michael Perrin threw in 13-11. Louis Voisson 13-23. And all of these first two heats, all four guys are so close together. A quick look at the timing here, and from the number one spot that belongs now to Michael Perrin with a 12.94 right. after adjustment. Both cuts are good. And there you go, Michael Perrin takes the top spot. But what we should point out is that the fourth place after two heats with four athletes going is only 62 hundredths of a second slower than the top spot. This is how close together these guys are in this particular discipline. So this is some great action right here in Stocksaw. Mika Perrin targeting so well to get up there. And you can see here, he's got lots of the blade in there. And there is that angle that I was talking about from Louis Poisson using the blade angle and holding the motor steady at the top. And Perrin, I believe he was moving motor and blade all together. So, yeah, really interesting look on these two guys. But Michael Perrin on the top of the ranking so far after two heats with Loïc Voisson and Sebastian Bateau in positions two and three. And Mikhail Shkonichka sitting in fourth place. But the times, look at the times, how close they are together. And I do believe we have Mikhail Perrin with Lisa right now. Thanks, Troy. Yeah, I'm here with Michelle Perrin. And I would like to ask you, that was an amazing time. Are you happy with it? Yeah, I'm pretty happy because uh, the first hit on the under end it doesn't go very well. But uh, in the stock show, he go OK, and I'm, I'm happy. You can be. Is there any tactic you have for the other heats? I just chop my wood and uh, it is what it is. <laughs> and you do your best. And I do my best. All right. Thank you so much. And now back to our experts. I just chop my wood and it is what it is. That's a great line. I love it. That's perfect. <laughs> I guess I should start saying his name correctly as well. Michel Perrin, is that right? Yes, I think so. Okay. <laughs> All right, our next heat coming up, and we should have Michael Grunwald up against Matthias Klima. Mikolai, Mikolai. So serious. And we heard from Mikolai earlier in, in, in the interview that uh, he's looking forward to the standing block chop. Let's see how he does here with the stock saw. He actually holds the national rookie record in stock saw for Poland at 11.21. So if he can pull that off here, boy, he's going to be really happy and that will put him in uh, a better position moving towards round two. 
Warm up your saw. Now you might be asking why these guys have to warm up the saws. Well, the idea is to get these saws running and warm before the competition. Then they leave them running on these specially designed pads on the floor so that the saws don't walk away on them. And then they can pull them straight up and get to work. Here we go. Your timber. Three, two, one, go. Grunwald with a great start. You can see the skill he has with the stock saw. Klima, no slouch, though, just slightly behind Grunwald as Grunwald has a lot of pressure on that saw at the moment. I don't think he's going to beat Klima. Oh, my goodness, how close were these two guys? Every heat's been so, so, so close. Hi, ay, 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 ay. Klima with a solid second cut. Time of 13.64 and Grunwald with a 13.49. All right, both cuts are good. So, Mikolai Grunwald with a 13.49 moves into third place. Matthias Klima, 13.64 is in sixth place at the moment, but the times are all just over the 13 second mark as we take a look back here. And that is some great targeting by Grunwald right there as he gets that first cut nice and clean. The second one was a bit thick, but he was through it so, so close ahead, just ahead of Klima, and there you can see that second cut by Matthias Klima is so thin. That is a beautiful second cut. A quick look up by him to see where Grunwald was, and uh, he drops that second cookie, and both cuts were good. And we have some new times locked in as we take a look at the overall standings for Stocksaw. Uh, a little bit surprised, actually, by Matthias Klima on this one. I thought that he would be a bit quicker. Uh, Grunwald has got himself in a solid position right now in third place. And Perrin still holding on to the top spot. And I'll say his first name again, Michel. <laughs> uh, someday I will get everybody's name in one of these shows absolutely correct. And then I can retire. All right. The stage is set for heat number four. Oliver Reinhardt against Alessandro Ciapponi. Yes, sir. All right. Here we go with Oliver Reinhardt, Alessandro Schiaponi. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. So we know that Reinhardt is a very good chopper. The question is, how well can he handle the stock saw? This MS661 seems to be in good hands with Alessandro Ciapponi. Wow, he had a good first cookie. And it looks like he's got a great second one of 13.99. And Reinhardt, surprisingly, he's slower than anybody else in this discipline at the moment. That is going to cost him. So hopefully his overall points will get him into a position to move into round two. But with this change in the format, that changes also All right. how things play out in ease discipline. So let's see. Good. All right. So Alessandro Ciapponi with a 1381 in seventh place. Oliver Reinhardt with a 1454. The first guy to get past 14 seconds here in eighth place. And both of these guys are really down on the bubble. And you mentioned to me earlier just off camera about uh, Grunwald shaking his hand. All right, results after stocks on. It looks like we're going straight to an interview with Lisa, and we'll check the results afterwards. Looking to you and to the camera. 
All right, thank you, Troy. Hi, Oliver Reinhardt. Hello, how's it going? I'm good, how are you? Pretty good, yeah. All right, so that was pretty close. Are you still happy with your performance? Um, yeah, I wouldn't say it wasn't too bad. I did the safe cut in the stock, so I really want to get into the semi-final, which means standing in single, yeah. All right, is there a certain opponent you're afraid of or that is pretty hard? <laughs> I wouldn't say afraid of, but uh, I think the competitive field today is very strong. Uh, yeah, I won't put anyone particular out. I think they're all very good and I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be fun, yeah. I bet you're going to do a great job. <laughs> all right, thank you so much. And now back to the studio. So back to us here. Wow, I'm amazed. Th that's all so fast and they're so close to each other. This is crazy. I thought, well, the rookies, they're the future, but they won't be that good. Uh, they are good. Yeah, and they're very good. They're super solid. They've been showing. I mean, you could see how close they were in the stock saw just now. I'm. Pff, it's anybody's game here at this point. And uh, let's take a look at the ranking and yeah. see whose game it is at the moment. So far in stock saw... Michel Perrin, Michel, yeah, I got his name right, is uh, still on top with Loic Voisson in second, Nikolai Grunwald. He had a solid cut there, but you did mention to me off camera or off screen that uh, he was shaking his head a little bit, and why would he do that? I think probably that's just competitive disappointment, you know? I mean, these guys are, are always looking to improve and, yeah. and get better. And He's and still got a solid place, man. Yeah, like. and I mean, I think he was probably thinking about getting his record or beating his record or at least getting close to it. He was a couple of seconds off, so it's not the end of the world. He's still in a solid position here as we move on to heat number five. All right, so there you see heat number five's pairing, Lukas Vargasreiter going up against Marcel Steinkemper. See these guys go against each other as well in previous events. And there you see sixth place at the Six Nations Rookie Cup from 2019, I believe it was, or 2020. And then the winner of the German Ford Transit Cup 2021 was Marcel Steinkemper, as I mentioned that off the top of our show here today. Warm up your soul. Athletes ready? Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Oh, nice start by Vagasleiter. He had a thin first cut there by the looks of it. He's in really, really close. Steinkamper putting a lot of pressure on there, though, as he is already in the upcut, and he's got a nice clean one, but he took a little bit of a pause at the end there, and his time came in at 13.87. Vagasleiter surprising at 16.06. Unbelievable. I'm really surprised because his first cookie looked super solid. Hopefully, we'll get to see Vagasreiter in the slow-mo a little bit more and see if something happened there with the saw or the blade or something. Let's see. All right, both cuts are good. All right, so we have fair cuts on both sides, but a surprising time of 16.06 for Lukas Vagasreiter. Marcel Steinkemper, in the meantime, has a 13.87. That puts him in eighth place at the moment in Stocksaw. That also is going to shift the results in the overall around a little bit. But look right here. So you can see that is a really nice thin first cookie at the start. Looks like he's got a bit of an angle headed downhill, though. And that could slow the saw down as he cuts through. Barely any downswing at all by Marcel Steinkamper on the way up. And you could see he paused a little bit. It almost looked like he had a chain stall. Got it back up and running again. And that uh, last little final cut right here. It just stopped on him, and then he had a bit too much pressure and had to pull the trigger one last time and get through. And you can see there, that is the relief of not having broken that cookie on the way up. So that is a good job by Marcel Steinkemper, who is sitting in eighth place in the stock saw standings with one more heat to go. And there you see Vargas Reite down at the bottom. They adjusted his time, so it's now a 15.93 with our last two athletes coming on stage now. Robin Haas up against Edvin Carlson. Whoa. 
Warm up your saw. Pia, do you have a favorite in this pairing here? Oof. <laughs> That's a good reaction. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy, but no, no I'm, I'm going to let me be surprised. Um, All right. Athletes, that's ready. a fair. That's a fair Stand reaction because it's anybody's timber. game here. Yeah, I don't want to have any pre-choices. Do you have go. a favorite? Edwin Carlson, I think, is going to take this one down. But Robin Haas has been really strong in this discipline. Both of them have good first cookies by the looks of it. Bit of a thick one there. Edwin uh, Carlson looks like he might be a slight bit slower on the upstroke. No, I spoke in my own shoe. And Edwin <laughs> Carlson has a 1321 with Robin Haas at 1396. So, yeah, luckily. Carlson came through and I, I don't have to uh, pay a quarter into the swear jar. Uh, he did a good job there and uh, with a solid, yeah. You were so right. Cut. I don't know if I was so right. I was I was okay, sweating bullets there for out. a moment. Good. But yeah, <laughs> we're close. Good job by both of these guys, though. And uh, we have official times now locked in. And Edvin Carlson, uh, where are we here now? Uh, just looking for the stock saw results. Ooh, actually, he slipped up into second place. I thought he would be farther down there. No, that's what I was saying. Yeah, you were Robin, so right. Robin Haas did a, a pretty solid job as well with a 1391. So he's in ninth place at the moment. We'll have to take a look how that affects the overall standing shortly as we get a look really quickly there at the upstroke from Robin. Ooh, not bad. That was a nice first cookie by Edvin. You could see it was nice and thin. The second one was a bit of a fat bob, though, as uh, he was really close to the line on the upstroke. Luckily, he didn't cut over the line and uh, did have a fair cookie on the floor, as our head judge on stage alluded to, with both cuts are good. And let's take a look at the overall standings here. So Loic Voinson, Edwin Carlson, and Matthias Klima at the top of the rankings here after two disciplines. Unfortunately for Sebastian Bateau and Lukas Wagesreiter, their scores at the moment are just not strong enough. So positions 11 and 12 will be dropped from moving on to round two. And uh, we will take 12, or uh, rather, excuse me, 10 athletes on to round two. There you see Sebastian Bateau with a total of nine points and Lukas Wagesreiter with seven points will be eliminated as we move on to the next discipline and the second round would be standing block chop. So I'm now really into timber sports and I really got to admit that I'm binge watching it. Where do I do that? On Amazon Prime. So there are a lot of ways to watch Timber Sports, but Amazon Prime, is, it's pretty comfortable. You, you feel like you get that TV kind of feeling. That's pretty cool. I think it's pretty nice. So if you're missing out on one, like on a championship, or if you want to rewatch it because it was so exciting, just go to Amazon Prime and enjoy it. Oh my God, how close is this? It's one of the closest heats we've had all day long, and it's Australia. When the crowd start, you know, uh, erupting, screaming, shouting, it's it just really does give you goosebumps. It's pretty awesome to compete in front of a crowd like this. I've been working my ass off the last five years to get to this point. Is it going to be the checker moment? Yes, it is, it and is. the crowd goes to heaven. It might make some people nervous, it doesn't make me nervous. It makes me ready to go. To come here to the World Championships is, is one of my dreams. It has been ever since as a kid. The Rookie Championship definitely is this one thing where they can gain the most experience out from, I, I think. But there's a training camp as well. Have you heard from this one? I did hear about this one, the Rookie Academy. It, it just really took cool place. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't that long ago. Uh, and it's a perfect chance for these guys that you're seeing on stage here today to, you know, cut their teeth even a little bit farther with uh, assistance from the pros. And it's also one of the reasons why you're going to see a new discipline as the final round and that's the springboard because they have to have a chance to really develop on the springboard before they jump into the pros. It's only on one board, but still, it's a skill that's going to help them along the way when they do become pros. So it's a really big thing here, and it's going to make this competition a lot more exciting today. 
Yeah, it definitely is. And they get so much knowledge from it. But, well, I think you should have some impressions of the Rookie Academy thing as well. So have a watch of the following. Today we are at uh, Bart Jensen's uh, training camp in Holland, uh, the Rookie Training Camp. It's a great experience because there are three national champions, Hans Ove Hansen, Christoph Geisler, Martin Komarek. So it's, it's fantastic. I feel better prepared. It's nice to have uh, three champions who, who we have uh, has for the, the training. He's, uh, I think the best way to, to grow up and to, to do stronger and better. The knowledge of the experienced athletes, that's the key how uh, we can move the sport and the new generation forward. There is a lot of good uh, rookies. Uh, here today. They are a little bit tensed, they are a little bit nervous, but uh, the level is high. So that, I'm looking forward to see the competition. I hope when the athletes go home tomorrow night, they are excited for the next competition. They had some experience this weekend. They learned special things about the wood and equipment. And they feel well for the real big competition. At the end of this little video, we've saw quite a lot of guys doing the standing block job discipline. And that's where we're going to head now straight into it, into the third discipline. Wow, time is passing so fast. Have fun. Standing Block Chop At the Standing Block Chop, the felling of a tree with an axe is simulated. A vertically positioned wooden block with a diameter of 27 centimeters has to be cut through from both sides. A powerful and precise swing with the axe is the premise of a good result. Well, since a few guys already had to drop out, there are only four heats now in this discipline, and I'm going to tell you which guys are going to compete against whom. In the first heat, Mikolai Gronwald, who apparently loves this, uh, this discipline, is going to go against Mikhail Skornitschka. In the second heat, the Italian guy Alessandro Ciapponi, I hope I pronounced him correctly, is going to go against Oliver Reinhardt. In the third heat, Michel Perrin <laughs> is going to go against Matthias Klima. And in the fourth heat, in the last heat for this discipline, Edwin Carlson is going to go against Loa Monson. I misspoke earlier, and it was only eight athletes were uh, moving through. I said it was ten, so call me a liar and uh, slap me on the face. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we saw uh, Mik Mikolai Grunwald disappointed with his results so far, but he makes it to round two, says he really likes this discipline. His personal best here at 2190, but I should point out that later on in the heat, heat number four has uh, got Loic Voisson, uh, and uh, he is solid in this discipline as well. So uh, I believe he holds uh, the national rookie record of 1657. So let's see how this boils down in heat number one. And we'll start things off with Mikhail Skonichka and Mikolai Karunov. Ready. Stand to <laughs> your timber. Three, two, one, go. So a standing block chop and upright chopping like this in general, the uh, position and angle of the saw is so keen and so impressively important. And there's the perfect example of why that 
axe skipped away because the angle was just a little bit too much. And uh, that's a dangerous situation, and that's what I wanted to point out. Grunwald, however, controlled the axe well, moved around to the other side. Skornichka still working here hard to try and get through the backside of his block. It might be close between these two guys, and I believe Grunwald has his down at 28, and Skornichka in 30.67. There will be adjustments there as well, but that's the one thing that I really wanted to point out to you at the very beginning of this is that this is where discipline with that axe and experience play such a huge role. Small rotations of the All wrist. All right, both cuts are good. As I was saying, small rotations of the wrist create an angle on that axe head, and uh, you could already see they're talking about it right in that position there. As he was coming up on the upstroke, that axe skipped off that block because the angle was just a bit too much, and I, hopefully you'll get to see it here in one of these early hits. Coming up now, and no, we don't get to see it, unfortunately. And there we moved over to uh, Skornichka very quickly as uh, both of these guys were doing a great job here. It was Grunwald who moved over to the backside of his block very quickly, and uh, Skornichka was about two strokes behind Grunwald as he came around to the other side of his block. And Grunwald almost had it with that last stroke, but needed one final blow. And you can see again, he's looking disappointed with the way things went. And I think probably he's got that adrenaline pump going on from that axe skip. And you saw that. It, it just jumped away from him. And, and you know, if you don't have a good grip on that axe, there's a dangerous weapon flying through the air. I even would say he, he looked a bit scared as well. Like, I, I would be too. So you can shave with those yeah. axes. I mean, they're very, very, very dangerous tools. Did you ever try? I have with the axe, yes. It's, really? It, it's difficult. It's really, really difficult. You, you have no idea the amount of precision that's required in order to strike the log and get a piece of that wood to chip out or, or slab out, as they call it, and, and, and have an efficient stroke so that you're not ch chopping straight in or at too much of an angle and have the thing skip away. It's, it's, there's tons of stuff going on, and that's why I say that experience and that knowledge that they learned from the, the Rookie Academy and just chopping wood makes all the difference in the world, which is why it's so great to see the younger guys coming through the rookies section and, and moving into the pros. All right, next heat and standing block chop, Alessandro Ciapponi. And uh, he's going up against Oliver Reinhardt from Switzerland. Alessandro Ciapponi, as we saw earlier, had a really, really great underhand chop, and uh, chopping seems to be absolutely his discipline. He has the national record for underhand chop. I might have mentioned that earlier at a 24-63, solid with the axe in his hand. Oliver Reinhardt, though. Athletes, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. As I was saying, Oliver Reinhardt, though, was uh, one of those guys that just seems to have that uh, calmness about him as he gets deeper into the com uh, competition. Chiapone and Reinhardt both on the first side. Reinhardt is the first one to move over to the backside, looking good. Chiapone a stroke behind now as he moves over to the backside of his block. Oh, a little bit of a hookup and a, and a skip maybe uh, mixed between the two. It just bounced away, not dangerously. Oh, wow! Nice final cut from Oliver Reinhardt with a 25-12. Chiapone another stick and drops it in a 30-95. So Oliver Reinhardt with a solid hit on the block there and has a 24.77. That is the time to beat in standing block chop at the moment. So he is doing what he said in the interview with Lisa earlier on that he just wants to get in to All the right, next round and move through. Are good. So Chiapone and Reinhardt both have official scores locked in. Alessandro Chiapone unfortunately sitting in fourth now with a 30.70. Hopefully that will be enough to hold up and get him into the next round. But we still do have to get through the single buck after the standing block chop is done. So there's opportunity still on the rise for both of these guys here. But Oliver Reinhardt with a nice time here with 24.77 is ahead in the standing block chop as we take a look at those first few hits and the backside hits there.
And there we just saw, just a moment ago, we saw that little bounce. It wasn't a skip exactly, and it was what I was mentioning to Pia earlier. His angle of the axe was just a bit too 90 degrees going into the block and did get a, a really clean cut. So standing block chop results, uh, re excuse me, results so far with two heats still to go. Reinhard, Grunwald, Skonichka, and Schiaponi, one, two, three, and four. And uh, in the overall standings, that uh, has Oliver Reinhardt in the top, Mikhail Grunwald sitting in second place, Chiaponi at the moment in third, and Skornichka in fourth. But we will change that around a little bit, Pia, I believe. Yeah, we first we're going to have a listen to an interview with Lisa, who has already Alessandro Chiaponi in front of her, who has already been twice national champion. And so I'm very keen what he has to say. Thank you, Pia. Hi, Alessandro Chiaponi. How was it? Yeah, it's good. Uh, hardwood, but I think I do um, just a clean cut, and I try to, to save my position for the next hit. Is there a secret at the standing block job you want to share, maybe? Yeah, but you have to training, be focused, and chop. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, we wish you all the best for later. And now back to Pia and Troy. All right, here we go. Uh, we're looking at our next heat coming up, heat number three with Michel Perrin. Uh, and I'm proud of, I'm just giving myself a slap on the shoulder. I said the name right again, Pia. <laughs> uh, all right, and he's going up against Matthias Klima. And we saw that Matthias Klima has so far been a really, really solid competitor today. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how this one goes down. Michel Perrin should be very, very good in this discipline. A solid chopper. If he were in Australia, we would call him a chopperoo. A chopperoo? Yeah, That's the Australian. Nice kind of nickname. The Australian Love team it. are called chopperoos. Oh, wow. Are they all so good in this discipline? They're just Andy. good in general. I mean, the Australian Ready. team's insane. All right, Stand here we go. To your timber. Three, two, one, go! So. Matthias Klima on the right-hand side there. Nice deep hits there as he gets really working with his hip. Michel Perrin, he's about two strokes behind Klima. Klima, wow, he is just destroying this log. He might even get through in a really solid time. A bit of a stick there. Oh, boy, look at that time. Personal best for Matthias Klima, 21.52. And Michel Perrin also super satisfied with a 24.08. And both of these guys move into positions one and two in the standing block chop, respectively. And they have just really shown some skill on that discipline, but none better than Matthias Klima so far at the top of the ranking in standing block with a personal best. Fantastic. Okay, both cuts are good. And again, you know, you, you may look at the time and go, well, there are better times out there. But yeah, he's got a personal best. And that says that he's making improvements. He's making strides. He's taking the next step to becoming a better timber sport athlete. So, I mean, it's a good thing for us to see these personal bests drop. For sure. And it's, it's quite a long and a very hard way to the pro competitions. Yeah, I mean, you can't Not just, you can't just uh, step out the door and say, I think I'll uh, become a pro timber sport athlete today. You actually have to have a lot of training and skill behind you. But uh, Matthias Klima here, boy, he really did a great job. And he was just murdering that log. Look at that one big stick there. And I think had that not been there, it might have been even a half second to a second faster on that final blow. But he did a great job there up against Michel Perrin, who was also very strong in this discipline. And you can see he was also pretty satisfied with that final yeah. blow as he gave a fist bump there, right? <laughs> So you could hear him in the interview saying probably, or if he was going to have an interview, I'm stoked. <laughs> probably. <Yeah. laughs> the first thing to say after such a performance. I, I would be stoked as well. But uh, hey, 
And as uh, the overall standings, there's a bit of moving around now. Matthias Klima at the top had shifted Oliver Reinhardt, who was in the top spot, down to third. And Michel Perrin now moves into second in the overall standing. So this is the fun part about this. You know, you see those standings in the overall change, even though the guy might be, you know, really, really good in one discipline here, but not so strong in the other. Those points reflect in the overall. So, yeah, this is, this is where it starts to get really exciting as we get farther in in the rounds. And our next heat between Edwin Carlson and Loic Voisson, a Frenchman against a Swede. But I'm wondering about one thing. You might you might better tell me that. Um, they're all starting at the bottom, like from from the bottom. Yeah, are you allowed to start from the top as well, or is it just a? You, Preparation can, you thing. can start however you want. Um, I, I think it mostly has Ready. to do with uh, getting the most power timber. into and the most Three, efficiency out two, of your cuts one, for this go. particular discipline. Okay. And you can see they'll do one hit down below, one yeah. on top, and then they'll do two and two. But there's no room. Ooh, Carlson with a huge stick there. And Voinson maybe one and a half strokes behind Carlson as they move over to the other side. Voinson, a big boy though, he's a strong character. And Carlson with another big stick, that's going to cost him. And it looks like Voinson's got it, he's done it in 22-26. A great job, and Carlson just keeps getting that axe stuck in there. It might have gone not deep enough on the first side, and now he is struggling on the back side with a very sticky block here as that axe continually getting stuck in there. Oh, and that is an unfortunate time of 35-65 for Edvin Carlson. Bottom of the bucket for the standing block chop results. That is going to cost him. But there's a happy man right there is uh, Loic Voisson with a 22.03. Slips in behind Mathias Klima for second in the standing block chop results. All right, both cuts are good. So once we get a, a look at the uh, re play here in slow-mo. Maybe we'll get to see what happened with Edvin Carlson because he started off really well. He had a couple of nice hits right off the bat. And there we see Loic Voisson to start. He got that axe caught in that first hit, but then after that, he was out and about. And there you could see Edvin Carlson. Big stick right there. Took him a long time to get that axe out. Then one more hit moved to the other side, and I think he probably could have gone through maybe two more hits on the first side just to save him pain on the backside. There's a big stick, and then there's another one coming up on his downstroke here. Oh, he hopped that one a bit, so that cost him another big stick right there. So unfortunately for Edvin Carlson, this just wasn't his day on the standing block chop, but for Louis Coinsaw, definitely his day as uh, he locked in a solid time of 22.03. So there you see Matias Klima on top in standing block chop with Louis Coinsaw and Michel Perrin. And uh, oh, it looks like we have actually been updated with some information here. Um, I don't know what I'm looking at on my screen, but that can't be correct. I got a bunch of world records showing here. That's not right. So we have a personal best. And now looking at the overall standings, Matias Klima holding on to the top spot, tied with Loic Voisson, 34 points each. Michel Perrin with 27 in third and Oliver Reinhardt down in fourth with 23. So far, so good. After this, uh, as you called it, tight discipline and tight results, we're going to straight move on into the fourth discipline, which is kind of, it, it's, the tool is kind of a monster in my, in my eyes, because it's two meters long and it's so sharp, but everything you need to know about this one, you're going to watch it now. Single buck. The single buck is a one-man saw about two meters long. With this, the athletes have to cut off a complete disc from a 40 centimeter thick wooden block. The perfect interplay between rhythm and strength is the key to success. The two meter long cross cut saw used for the single buck discipline is made especially for competition. A series of consistently patterned 10 centimeter long teeth are cut with a laser on one side of the saw and then hand sharpened. Saw teeth are divided into two types, cutters and rakers, just like on the old school saws. The saw weighs about 5 kilos and its base price starts at around 1,500 euros.
we're still in round two, but at the second discipline, as you've just seen, single bag, we've got four heats in the first heat. Mikolai Gronwald is gonna compete against Michal Skornicka. In the second heat, Alessandro Giapponi is gonna go up against Oliver Reinhardt. In the third heat, Michel Perrin against Matthias Klima. And in the fourth heat, Edwin Carlson against the Frenchman Louis Moisson. And there it is, the so-called misery whip, as many athletes call this particular tool. As you saw in the description earlier, and as you mentioned off the top, Pia, it is a monster of a tool. Two meters long, and they've got sweeper teeth and cutter teeth. Now, the cutter teeth, the job is obvious. The sweeper teeth, the uh, job there is to remove any of the excess slough or sawdust or gunk that is in that cut. Now, there are two ways that this discipline can go down. It can go down with assistance or without assistance. Now, with assistance, you'll see a wedger sprayer on stage with the athlete. And what they will do is once the top of that saw disappears into the log, they will stick a plastic or rubber wedge in there to keep the saw from binding or the, the wood from binding on the saw. And they'll also oil the saw as it goes through. Here, however, for the rookies, this is without assistance. So they are on their own. So they have to work even harder as the saw gets deeper into Effie. the wood. Flow Ready. and consistent Stand strokes are timber. important. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. And right off the hop, Grunwald gets it stuck. Skornichka, however, has got himself into the groove finally and is moving. He isn't using his hips as much as he probably could. Now Grunwald has got a flow going and he has done a great job to catch up. But a final stick at the end with too much angle has cost him a couple of seconds. And Skornichka gets the time with a 14.44. And a dull, can that be true? A world record for the rookies without assistance? We'll have to double check that as uh, we get an official call from our judges there and uh, they'll let us know. But if that's the case, a 14.20 should be a world record and Mikhail Grunwald also with a personal best. So this is a great moment here for these guys, both of them. The tension is unreal. <laughs> <laughs> no, eh? I'm feeling it here in the studio. Okay, both cuts are good. And it is official. We have a new junior world record for single buck, 14.20 from Mikhail Skornichka. What a day for him. The Czech Republic is going to be going bananas. And right there, <laughs> off the start, Mikhail Grunwald with a huge hookup, and that bowed the saw big time. But the thing is, once he got started, he was actually faster through the middle of that block than... Skonichka was, but then right here, he got another hookup as the angle was just a bit too much, and that cost him a good second and a half on the final cut. Otherwise, it might have been a different situation, but what a great job by Mikhail Skonichka and a 14.20, and a big congratulations for a new rookie world record. We've had a couple of those drop this summer. Well, this is just unreal. I think when you're on stage there and you're dropping a world record, yeah. I, I would be in cloud seven and <laughs> not concentrated at all anymore. Well, the thing is, I don't even think he realizes that he had a world record there. I, I think he probably knows that he had a good cut and yeah. he you know, went off stage looking at his time going, oh, it's okay. And then probably in this, the backstage area in the paddock, the rookie or the, the, the athletes are going to get told, hey, you got a world record. He'll, he'll probably be flying flat on the floor at this <laughs> point, just kind of uh, trying to breathe it out. <laughs> All right. Next heat in single buck, we have Alessandro Ciapponi and Oliver Reinhardt. So time to beat is 14.20. Will anybody else be able to do that? That's going to be a tough one. That is going to also play on the psyche of these guys if they know that there's a world record to be had today. Maybe, just maybe, we're going to see another one drop. Who knows? We'll keep a close eye on it here. What makes that even more special, though, is this is an unassisted world record. So um, it's, it's without assistance. 
So, I mean, like I said, these guys have to work a little bit harder in order to cut that log because the wood can bind on the saw. So it's really about keeping that flow going. But most of the pro championships I've watched until now, they, they, are, with. they are with. Ready. Correct. Stand so to why do your they timber. have to do it without? Three, two, one, go! All right, good start for both of them. Uh, it could be without that uh, it started off with the... Uh, the different restrictions, uh, having uh, two people on stage too close together during the corona. Uh, the other side of it is it could be that this is just a test of manhood. Whoa, look at that. Oliver Reinhardt with a 15.97. Both of these guys, Chiponi also with a nice time um, of 15.58. And there's a couple of personal bests. And so far, we've had three personal bests drop to the floor and a world record. So this is a really, really, really Really awesome single buck so far for the rookies. Yeah, I'm impressed. I mean, personal bests all over the place and a world record so far so good in uh, in single buck. I don't even have words. I'm speechless. I haven't expected that. All right, both cuts. Are... I never, I never don't have words. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fantastic job. Alessandro Chiaponi slips into second place in single buck with his personal best time of 15.36. And Oliver Reinhardt with a really solid performance sitting in third place in a single buck with a 15.66. Mikolai Grunwald not far off with a 16.66. So, uh, yeah, like I said, all in all really good. And, oh, look at that. Oliver Reinhardt was struggling to draw that saw back through at one point. It hooked up really big time. Uh, otherwise, we might have seen a much faster time from the young man from Switzerland. Yeah, and I can read lips, uh, but I don't really need to be able to know how to read lips to know what he just said right there as uh, he was talking about that stick that he had on the back draw. So, hmm, interesting. And there you see, yeah, single buck. So far, after two heats, Skonichka on top with a great time. He'll be celebrating that one for, oh, yeah. yeah, as long as it holds. <laughs> for the next month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. In the overall standings, that puts Oliver Reinhardt back in the top spot. But let's not forget, we have two more heats to go. And Matthias Klima, who previously held the top spot, is in the next heat. So if he can get himself a halfway decent score, it should move him back into the top spot leading into the springboard competition. Speak of the devil, Mathias Klima on the right-hand side there, and Michel Perrin. So here we talk a little bit about the difference in the guy's sizes. Uh, Michel Perrin, uh, meter 93, Matthias Klima, a meter 80, um, or 83, I believe. Uh, so in this case, Klima, powerhouse, absolutely, you can see he's all muscle. Uh, not to say that Perrin is not, but Perrin has the advantage of having long legs and uh, long torsos, so he can really flow with that saw through and use the entire length of this two-meter saw. If you pay close Andy. attention to where Ready. the saw cuts Stand and if the tip of the blade timber. disappears into that Three, log. Two. One, go! So right away, Michel Perrin with the long strokes. Klima starting off with the choppy ones to get the saw going. And now Perrin into his flow. Klima also looking good, not using the entire saw, but it could be it's good for him, and it is good for him. And we've got another world record that just dropped off the wall. Oh my goodness, 13.75. 0.45 seconds faster than the world record held by Michel uh, Miko Skonichka, and that didn't last very long. It was one heat away, and we have a new world record. I feel heartbroken for Skonichka, but what a great job by Matches Klima to claim a new world record here. And Michel okay, Perrin with a 14.50. Good. Another personal best. Wow, these guys got some good wood, and these are some hot saws. And I'm speaking not of the motorized version <laughs> either. It is just fantastic. So far, every single athlete who's cut today has had a personal best. I don't know what to say about that. It is insane. This is just crazy. But Skonichka didn't even have the opportunity to party and celebrate. Uh, maybe, <laughs> he had a, maybe he had a quick schnapps in back in their, uh, in their locker room and, uh, and they cheers him really quickly and he'll be relaxed for the springboard when he comes out later on. <laughs> Nevertheless, he held the world record for all of 4 minutes, 55 seconds, and now 
Matthias Klima with a great 1351, the new world record holder. And boy, these guys were really close together. In fact, Michel Perrin was only almost one second um, behind, just under one second behind Michel, Michael Skornicka for the world record position. So uh, there you go. That is it. 1351, a new world record has been set today. And taking a look at the... Wow, look at that. When do you ever see that world record? World record. Yeah, personal best, I just personal wanted best, to personal say best, that. Personal best. Unbelievable. This is crazy. That's amazing. So fantastic job by these guys. And now our next heat as we take a look at how things have shifted around. And there you go. Matthias Klima takes over the top spot in the overall standings once again. And that means that he shifted uh, Oliver Reinhardt back down to fourth position, a position that he's been familiar with all day long today in our next heat. Edwin Carlson and Loic Voisson coming out on stage. Now, the Swedes are pretty well known for this discipline. And uh, in particular, Ferry Swan, who uh, was the first guy to hold the world record in this discipline unassisted. Oh, wow. But you just mentioned earlier that it is of profit for them if they are taller. But does it, isn't it better if they are heavier? Or is it better if they are taller? You know what I mean. I know what you Ashley, mean. And, uh, and ready. If, you know, you could be really Stand strong, but if you power the saw too much, you could bend it Three, or, or two, stall it on one, the way through. Go. Uh, yeah. And uh, and using your hips and and pushing off of that back leg is very important. And you can see right here that step off the back leg. He's using really short, choppy strides. Both of these guys are. Loic Foisson has uh, almost got a motor behind him there. And Loic Foisson with a personal best, 14.44. Oh, Edwin Carlson struggling on that last one. But he's got a personal best as well at 18.49. Unbelievable. Every single athlete's walked away from single buck with a personal best today. Unheard of. I've never seen anything like that before in my life. That's amazing. I'd call it a discipline with personal bests from now on. This is crazy. This is so good. Yeah, we call this personal best saw today. <laughs> All right, both cuts are good. And by the way, that time from Loic Voisson, 14.24, puts him in third place in single buck and second place in the overall standings. And as single buck was the second discipline in round number two, that means we are going to be moving on to the springboard in round three. And for us, the springboard is the tell-all discipline. It's the one that's going to tell us who will be our new rookie European champion. But what a great set of cuts by all of these guys today. I have actually never seen a complete set of heats where everybody has a personal best. That's unbelievable. Look at that. Wow. And they're all so close. Yeah, I mean, you know, 1825 uh, yeah. at the yeah, end. Yeah, except for the last 4. one. 4.74 <laughs> seconds off. But I mean, really, the, the time difference between them all is just amazing. And there you see the change in the overall standings. Klima, Voisson, Perrin, Skornicka, Reinhardt, Japoni, Carlson, and Grunwald. We're going to lose a few of these guys going into the springboard. And that's where we stand. So we have the anal analysis of the first and the second discipline now. Troy, what are your thoughts on this one? In round two, you mean? Um, geez, I, you know, I, I, I mean, there's not really anything that can be said above what we just saw in the single buck. That's unheard of. Every single athlete there got, a, uh, you know, a, a, a personal best. And we saw two world records the first yeah. time. Uh, and then this, the, the, that world record was broken again. I'm, I'm completely flabbergasted at this point. <laughs> I'm totally discombobulated. But I think we're going to get to see yeah, them side by side. Yeah, these two world records. Yeah. We're going to see them now. We're so. going to see Konicha against Klima, the comparison of their performances. I'm yeah, sorry. Let's, let's have a look here. I mean, yeah, uh, let's have a look. I'm, I'm, I'm totally discombobulated, like I said, but we <laughs> get to compare these two guys side by side and just see what the difference is. Maybe there is no difference in style. Let's have a look. Okay, maybe not. Looks like we've got a bit of a technical issue, but uh, what we can say is that uh, what we witnessed there is, is normally not 
heard of in these sports. So, I mean, you've just witnessed something that's just uh, absolutely yes. fantastic, Pia. Congratulations. Yes, it, oh, <laughs> thank you. I'm feeling so honored to be able to watch this. But speaking of the whole competition and the stage, usually you always see a Ford Ranger in the back, like the car, most of the time a truck. I think the trucks are just really, really cool because mm. you can use them in every situation. It doesn't matter if on the street or on an island climbing a tree. They are really nice cars. And I'll take a Ford Raptor any day. Yeah, me, me as well. <laughs> so you might too after the following. Did you ever drive one of those cars? I've, I would love to, but I never had the opportunity to. I, I think the people are not trusting me enough for such a great car. Unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to drive the Ranger or the Raptor at all, but I would sure love to. But what I have used quite often is the... Uh, is that transporter where there's tons of room in the back. I mean, yeah. all of these vehicles that we're seeing, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I'm still blown away by that single buck. All of these vehicles from Ford that we're seeing at these events are super utilitarian. And I mean, you can use them for all sorts of different things. And as a, as a timber sports athlete, <clears throat> You know, you got space for your 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 uh, stock saw, your uh, hot saw back there, and uh, you know, in this case, <laughs> a few more single bucks because these guys that just saw what happened here today in the single buck are going to definitely be going. Ah, I need to maybe look at some different options for my single buck and practice that a bit because two for world sure. records and a bunch of personal bests just went out the window. So, yeah, fantastic. They will find use of these cars for sure. So this is now the Rookie European Championship, but that's not the only competition which is taking place today in Munich at the Castle House. Because today, as well, the European Trophy is taking place. Just afterwards at, I think, 7 p.m. 7 p.m. start. Yes, 7 p.m. But it doesn't end there. There is a lot of go things, a lot of competitions going on this summer. The next one is on the 7th of August, the European Nations Cup, also in Munich. On the 8th of August, the Austrian Pro Championship is going to take place. On the 21st of August, the German Pro Championship in Gelsenkirchen and on the 28th of August, the Nordic Pro Championship. And let's not forget, Spain. that's just through the end of August. We also yes. have a bunch of stuff coming up in the in the fall as well. So, uh, yeah, there's lots of timber sports on the way, folks. Don't forget uh, to keep a close eye on the schedule and everything. You know that PA and I are going to be uh, keeping a close eye on everything <laughs> that's going on with these guys. Of course. Especially after that single buck. Unbelievable. <laughs> Sorry, I'm but blown away. I am keen which surprises we're going to see now in the third round in the last discipline, Springback, the kitty cat discipline, as you <laughs> like to call it. I love the name. <laughs> as so, finicky as ever. Yes. And you're going to know more in just a few seconds. Springboard simulates the traditional way of felling trees by climbing up over thick branches. First, a notch, known as a pocket, is chopped into the log. The springboard is then anchored into this pocket. 
Now the athlete will climb up onto the springboard to chop a 27 centimeter wooden block from both sides at the top of the log. So as before, two athletes had to leave us. So there are gonna be three heats now. In the first heat, Alessandro Giapponi against Oliver Reinhardt. In the second heat, Mikhail Skonichka against Michel Perrin. I'm sorry, I always want to pronounce it French. And in the third one, Louis Vincent against Mathias Klima. Let's have a look. So what we're seeing is the it's the first time they're actually putting to use in an international competition, except for the um, the, the rookie camp that they had a while yeah. back. This was an opportunity for them to really test the waters on the springboard. And what we'll be seeing here today is it's a springboard with a single board. Now in the pro level competition, it's springboard with two boards where they have to set a pocket, put the board in, and then set another pocket, put a second board in, and they're chopping from about two meters up in the air. Here, they'll be crazy. only setting one pocket. Yeah, absolutely crazy. Um, they'll be only setting one pocket, putting the board in, and then chopping a block from that board. Now what's key here is getting a quick pocket. The optimal pocket is a four hit pocket. So basically you use that ax to hit the block four times to create a perfect pocket where you could put the board in and you've got a bit of a degree of an angle on that board so that it's uh, pointing up about maybe 30 degrees or so. And that's when you get a really solid back foot to push off of and use your hips to really twist into hitting that block on top. We'll get to see this with a little bit more detail once these guys get into it. But this is the first time where they're really competing head to head in the springboard. Eddie. And it's going to be a test for Ready. all of these guys. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Also, this is a discipline with a lot of DQs going on, usually, isn't it? A timeout DQ is the biggest one in this discipline. Yeah. You can see these guys are spending a lot of time, and really, this is the experience playing a role here, taking too much time to set the pocket, being uncomfortable with the pocket. But Oliver Reinhardt, he's got his pocket set. It was about eight hits to get the pocket done, and now Chiapponi's finally got his pocket set. And uh, if we get a look at the boards, you can see Chiapone's board is sagging a little bit by his back foot, whereas Oliver Reinhardt's board is up a little bit higher. Now, the difference here is that Oliver Reinhardt can push off of that back foot and really turn his body through the hips and, and uh, have a nice, strong blow on the block there at the top there. Now, he's got to be careful. He's got a deep side. And one final hit. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Oliver Reinhardt with a world record of 48.85. And uh, Chiapone still working on the first side of his block, and it looks like his board might be sagging a bit more. And what happens here is when the board sags, you start to use your shoulders and your upper body to swing the axe more than you do your hips and your lower body, and that becomes really tiring. And he's also got to make sure that he cuts that board within a certain time. If he goes past that certain time, and I believe it's a minute 30 for one board, then that means it's time out. So he's got to get it done here in very quick, short order time and it looks like he's going to do it. And, yeah, because this is the first time that these guys are going to be competing in this discipline, we're going to see personal bests across the board here as well. But we got our first world record there with Oliver Reinhardt's 48.52. Okay, your cut was good, and your cut was not only good, it was also world record. Very good. I've never <laughs> seen you reacting somebody like that to a world record. Yay. <laughs> uh. I would be jumping, screaming. Nope, just, just moving the finger. 
Oh, well. Yeah, he's focused. I mean, at he this is. point, Oliver Reinhardt is, uh, you know, he's just he's just broken the world record in the springboard. So that, that bodes well for him down the road because it means that he can take that confidence and that skill and, and the things that he's learned in this particular discipline and take that to the next level when he yeah. does move into the pro level. And, and I mean, at the pro level, it's an important discipline because uh, it is the, the, the gateway, let's say, to get you to the hot saw, which is a whole other world of pain for these guys. But that's later on down the road. And that was a dangerous moment right there for Reinhardt. He was so deep on the first side that had he taken one more hit on that first side, he might have cut that block down, which would have meant a DQ for him because he has to cut from both sides of the log. That's such a fine line between a world record and a DQ. Yeah. That's wow. Literally. Now, we're going to have an interview with Lisa on site in the Castle House with our now, winner for now, Oliver the Ryan. one who has a world record, Oliver Reinhardt. History, you did the springboard and you did a world record. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good, yeah. Not too bad. I believe that. So um, you mastered it so well. Is there a secret or something you can say you need to do, know or you need to do? Well, I would say before before I give any advice, we we'll wait till the end of the competition. I'm sure there will be some more world records. <laughs> All right, but again, congratulations! That was just amazing. Now back to P and Troy. I slightly got the feeling that he, oh, it's a world record. I'll take it for granted and, and be like, oh, it's happening often, isn't it? Like, well, what? yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, it sounds that way. And, and, uh, and, and I don't think that we should uh, uh, allude to him making it look like it's less than what it really is because it is a world record. But like he said, chances are that that will happen another couple of times in this competition yeah. because it is the first time where we're officially adding the springboard into the competition here. So, um, you know, if anybody can beat that time, we'll see. Yeah. All right. So the stage looks like it's and, and I mean, I, I, I will say that the guys that are preparing the stage have quite the amount of work set out for them here as well. And like here, you could see Oliver on his board with a great angle. And yeah, there's that finger number <laughs> one. I think that's his thing to that's, do. That's a practiced finger yes. right there. Huh? <laughs> All right, so our next heat will be coming out shortly. It looks like they've got their uh, stands set up, stand A and B. And as I was mentioning there, it's quite a bit more effort to put these stands in place than it is to do the other stands because it's a really big piece of equipment that they've got to put in there for these guys. And the discipline also has quite a lot of history as the sports itself. Like, it's a family sports, but it's also an extreme sports. It, 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 I'm speechless about the sports, and I think you will be too, because we're now going to have some more information about Timber Sports history. Third woodsman who can cut down a tree more easily than most people can chop one up. When it really comes to tackling large lumps, you can't beat the men of the forestry companies. Axman's gathering. This is Thomas losing the loss that gets it. What an atmosphere. This atmosphere is at on site at the place right now as well, I guess, because the people are ready for the second heat. Skonitra against Perrin. Yeah, this should be a good one here as well. And uh, Perrin uh, and Skonitra, you know, Skonitra is a solid, solid guy. I mean, bigger boy. Perrin, he's tall. 
but also not as heavy as Corniche. And we talk Just about to say that. Yeah, we wow. talk about the weights when we're on the springboard. You know, you really have to have that springboard set. If you weigh anywhere above 100 kilos, then you know you want to make sure that that springboard is really well locked in because the last thing you want is that thing sagging. No, I don't want to imagine that. Oh my God! <laughs> Never ever. Not in the middle of a competition now. Mm -hmm. uh, 97 kilos. Michel Perrin is uh, 97 kilos, but he's a tall guy. And uh, it'll be interesting to see because we have, I'm not going to say two weaknesses uh, battling against each other. One guy's tall, one guy's heavy. But, <laughs> I mean, we've seen it in the past where big boys get up on those blocks and they, they look like bunny rabbits jumping up on top of those things. And then they're just hammering away using that power and that weight on top of that uh, second board. So, uh, you know, it's going to come down to who has that board set really well here today. Athletes, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! So I'm just counting the number of hits here that these guys are taking. They're well past 12 hits. Um, so again, this comes down to the level of experience and the level of skill that they can gain practicing this discipline as often as they can. Now, uh, looks like Perrine has got his board set. I'm curious to see what the angle looks like for his board. Look at that angle. That's a, hu <laughs> that's a huge angle. That's almost 45 degrees. He could, uh, yeah, jump off the back of that towards the block as, uh, as he gets going on the top block. Definite advantage for Perrine on one side, but then you can also see Perrine is up so high that he's actually stroking down to the block because he's so tall at 197. And now Skornichka finally up on top, but you could see he's not happy with how his board is set. So this is going to be a problem for him as we get towards where the timing plays a role. Now he's resetting that pocket, and sometimes this is just about that uncomfortable feeling and making sure that that space is cleared out properly. But it's going to cost him a lot of time here, and I have a feeling that that's going to be the issue for Skonichka. And uh, Perrin is going super deep on the front side. He's also got to be careful that he doesn't cut through on just one side, that he's got cuts from both sides of that block. And it looks like they might be keeping the 2 minute and 30 second time limit for the rookies on one board as well. And Perrine has opted to move to the backside. And you can see here, this is just an uncomfortable cutting position as you go on to the backside there. You're uh, cutting at a weird angle. Your hand position on the axe is different. So here is where controlling that axe is so important because you don't want that thing to skip away, especially when you're stroking down and it's coming around towards your springboard where your feet and your knees and your shins are. Oh, and there we go. Perrine has got a 208.76. And like I said, for these guys, we're going to see all personal bests across the board here in this case because it is the first time we're seeing this discipline. Uh, unless, of course, the time runs out. Now, I am not 100% sure where the official timeout is. We'll find out when Skornichka's time goes past 2.30. If it does DQ, yep, there you go. So 2 minutes 30 is the time limit, and he has officially exceeded it. That is unfortunate for Skornichka because... All he had to do is really cut through there, but that board was the big problem for him. And that really is the crux of it all and why I call it the kitty cat discipline because it's so finicky. If you don't get those boards in place, it can really mess with your head when you're standing up on top of them, mm. regardless of whether it's just a single board or two boards and you're up two meters. So that's going to be some disappointment okay. for Mikhail Skornichka, but Michel Perrin has himself a personal best at okay. 208.49. Your cut was good, and you cut, you cut uh, ran out of time, so unfortunately, DQ. But again, props to these guys. You know, it's the first time that we're seeing this discipline in the rookie competition. Uh, on an official level where points and everything are handed out. So this is this is a really important learning moment for these guys. And uh, it's an opportunity for them to get into the flow of what the competition will be like for the pros because there is the springboard as a major, major part of the pro competition. And I mean, that board from Michel Perrin was just insane. The angle was bananas. <laughs>
I'm actually a little bit surprised he didn't step out farther onto the back of that board yeah. and use that back leg of his for pushing off. He could have really had a lot more swing into the axe head. But again, you know, this is this is about that experience and about that uh, that time and using this to make a, you know the next steps, take the next steps into becoming a pro and really gaining that experience in something that's basically brand new for these guys in competition format. Yeah, I think because usually if they continue to the pro championship, it's the first time they do they really do the springboard, and I think it's just overwhelming if you yeah. then have to go full out. Well, previously we've seen rookies step into the pro competition and where they've really gone downhill, if they've made it into that last round where the springboard is, is they've lost it all on the springboard because of a timeout. So, you know, we, we've got our first world record here with a 48.52, which is a really, really respectable time from Oliver Reinhardt. Um, now looking at the overall standings, uh, Matthias Klima still on top. Oliver Reinhardt shifted down into third position with Michel Perrin. Even with his time not being so strong in springboard, he did jump up into second place in the overall standings. And now we have one more heat to go. And uh, that is with Loïc Voisson and Matthias Klima. Now, Matthias Klima basically just has to have a good solid time and he will be your new rookie champion. So that was quite a, a solid, solid two heats until now. Yeah, pretty good. I mean, we're going to take a look back at the last heat and analyze yeah. it a little bit to, to kind of get a bit deeper into it. But, yeah. uh, you know, like I mentioned, uh, this is a really, really difficult discipline because there's a lot going on. It's not like standing block chop or underhand chop where, you know, your focus is just to cut clean and, and properly through both sides of the logs here. You've got a lot of stuff going on. You've got to cut the pocket. You've got to cut that pocket quickly. You've got to place your board so that it's at the right angle. If it's sagging a little bit, what you saw with, um, with one of the athletes there whose name I've completely lost now, you know, he Perrine. didn't feel good about it. He went back and reset yeah. the thing, you know. And, oh. then, uh, and then once you're on that board, finding the right position to be able to really use your back leg, your hips, and your, your power into the block at the top, it just... There's so many things going on with springboard. You have to think about all of this in the second, right in the second. It's so much multitasking, I think. It's yeah, multitasking. And that's, uh, as my wife would say, not a guy thing. But uh, <laughs> in this case, uh, you know, uh, it really is. It rings true. There's so much going on up yeah. here. And it's not just about the power. It's not just about being her, her, her the whole time. You actually really have to be a little bit precise and a little bit almost uh, theoretical in your process when yeah, it in is, this particular for sure, discipline. For sure. And now we're going to see the third heat, the last heat in the last discipline, Loa Marçon against Klima. Be excited about it. I am. All right, stage is set. And here they come. So at this point, Matthias Klima just has to have a clean run and, and he's good to go on the top step of the competition so far. He's had a really, really strong day. Loïc Voisson, who's also had a really strong day, is currently sitting in fourth place with a good score here. He could potentially jump up into the top. So let's see what happens because there are a lot more points to be had here. Top points for this discipline, by the way, are 18. So if Loïc Voisson can score 18 points and much as Klima goes over the time, then we could have a complete shift in the overall standings. So nothing is sold yet down the farm, but like I said, Matthias Klima just has to have a really clean springboard. Getting all ready. I, I think I can feel the nerve, that they are pretty nervous, like, yeah, I mean, this is uh, this is like I was saying. It's the first time for them. The tension is definitely high Effie, for these guys, ready. knowing that they're in competition Stand on something that's completely timber. foreign to them. Three, two, one, go! So just going to take time here to count the hits on the pockets. So at past four now already. And Klima looks like he is pretty happy with the set. So we're at about uh, 90 degrees for Matthias Klima, Louis Voisson now on top of his board. So he's not far behind, but this is looking like a good battle between these two. So now it's about seeing who can get through that top block in a fairly decent time. Now remember, the time to beat from Oliver Reinhardt for a world record is 48.52. 
And uh, as we know, Matias Klima is a very good axe man. I don't know if he's going to make 48, though, but he's looking good so far. Loic Poisson not far behind him as uh, they are both doing well on their board and working that block. Now, Matias Klima has a bit of a sag in his springboard. Loic Poisson has moved onto the backside of his. Neither one of them are going to beat the world record, but we will see two personal bests here once those blocks drop down. And uh, it's looking very good for Loic Boisson. And Matias Klima gets it at 101.30. Personal best there. And Boisson struggling on the backside. Didn't cut it through on the front side deep enough. And now he's really having trouble with that weird angle. He's got lots of time to get through. And all he has to do is just get through there. Should do one more, two more, three more. And, uh, oh, it's going to be three. He lost a little bit of the ax there. Oh, it's just hanging on. It doesn't want to go. It's like that piece of corn that gets stuck in your teeth at the movie theater. Horrible. Oh, but we got a personal best there. Good job by Louis Vincent to finally drop it at 124.61. And Matthias Klima with a 101.21 doesn't get as close to Oliver Reinhardt as he would like at 48.52. But nevertheless, with that and making it official, let's assume everything is good to go. He will win this competition. Okay, both cuts are good. Bingo, bongo, boingo. So again, we've got a complete set of disciplines with personal best down the row, except for Skornichka, which is heartbreaking because of the timeout. But, yeah. you know, he would have done it otherwise. But there you see Matias Klima. One, two, three... Four. I think he had six hits to get that pocket set, which was really impressive for a rookie because that is probably the most difficult part of this discipline is getting a quick pocket set that really holds that board properly. Now, the one thing I will say is Loic Voinson had a better pocket and better springboard, but he struggled because he just didn't go through deep enough on the front side of his block on top, whereas much as Klima's board wasn't exactly at an angle that would have given the guy that has that much power the opportunity to really use his legs and hips to push through. You can see there, it's more or less at 90 degrees, maybe just a bit below that. But he cut through deeper on the first side before he went over to the back side, and that was the difference. There's a big stick by Loic Voinson as he kind of struggled on the back side. It was just too much time on the back side, and Matias Klima with a good clean backside cut, and uh, he wins this heat as we take a look at the uh, ranking here. Final results there for the overall match is Klima with 65 points is your new champion. 58 points for Louis Voinson in second place. And Oliver Reinhardt, this is the first time we haven't seen him on top of the podium in quite a long time. So as he said in the interview earlier on, there's a lot of really good guys out there, but he still does hold the world record in the springboard. So good job for him as he gets third place in today's competition. Well, wow. Um, I'm pretty amazed. It was, it was a very nice competition. And I think we're going to have a split screen soon of the first and the third place, which were the first and the second place in this competition, Oliver Reinhardt and Matthias Klima. And I'm excited to see this one because like, I really like to watch them and be like, what are do they doing differently? Th there has to be some kind of clue. And we're going to see now, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's the little nuances that uh, that make the difference between winning and being disqualified or winning and having a really good time or a world record in this case for Oliver Reinhardt. So I think we're going to get to see Matias Klima and Oliver Reinhardt in a side-by-side -side screen. And uh, maybe we get a chance to count the number of hits that we saw in the pocket for Oliver. We'll see. All right, so here you go. Oliver Reinhardt on the left-hand side, Matias Klima on the right-hand side. So that's four hits right there for Oliver. Five, six, seven, eight. Well, he went quite a ways in. Much as Klima had fewer hits on to set his pocket. Uh, but Oliver Reinhardt, look at the angle of the board there. And he really stepped all the way with his back foot onto the back of the board. There's the difference maker between these two guys. Matias Klima's board 
is sagging a bit. It's just below the 90 degree mark or at 90 degrees. So he and he hasn't got his foot all the way onto the back of the board. Meanwhile, Oliver Reinhardt has got his foot all the way on the back of the board. He can push off of that back leg. He can use his hips to turn and add power into the axe. And it's quite clear, Matias Klima is the more powerful hitter, but Oliver Reinhardt was a bit more efficient with his hitting as he switched over to the other side. One final blow, he went deeper on the first side. Risky, but it paid off for him. And there was the number one finger <laughs> yes. up in the air. Matias Klima, on the other hand, he really struggled in the last part of this because what I was saying earlier on is when you have to use your upper body shoulders and arms to swing the axe, you're not having an, as efficient uh, of a cut. You're not having as strong a cut and you're getting tired a lot faster with mm -hmm. that particular situation. So the foot position on the board plays such a key role. And this is one of the reasons why I say it's such a finicky discipline that uh, for the rookies is a really fantastic way to end their competition. One. Yes. And I think they will be now even more happy to have it all done <laughs> and they are waiting for the prize um, awards ceremony right now and we're gonna have a watch what they are doing I think right. they're still in preparation. Yeah, but it looks like there we, we see the uh, the different stands for uh, yes. third, second, and first. And uh, we're going to see these guys. And if you want to get involved in the conversation, there you can see hashtag Steel Timber Sports. Uh, send us your comments. Send us your notes. Send us your yes. pictures. Get involved. There's also a hashtag called Kiss My Axe, which is my absolute favorite hashtag. I love the shirts with this yes. <laughs> hashtag. There it is right there. Yes, my there axe. it is. I've got a hat with that <laughs> on it. So a lot of people ask me about that and then they come back to me after they've checked it out and they're like, yeah, hey, it's cool, man. <laughs> You're promoting. You're, you're an influencer for Timber Sports. Aren't yeah, you? I'm, I'm like an secretly. influencer. Yeah, <laughs> secret influencer. <laughs> Oliver Reinhardt representing Switzerland. On the second place. On the second place and winner of the silver medal, Louis Quansoif representing France. First place and winner of the golden medal, Matthias Klima representing the Czech Republic. In honor of the winner, we will play the Czech Republic anthem.
Ed, Loyang Ronsaw, and Matthias Klima. Matthias Klima, congratulations on this enormous win. Matthias Klima, congratulations on this enormous win. How are you feeling? Just please share your feelings with us. I can't describe it. I'm pretty surprised. I shouldn't be here because uh, my friend from Czech Republic get, got injured. And I'm here and I want that. I can believe it. But you did a great job and he's gonna be so proud of you and we are all so proud of you and we will we're so excited of your next performance and thanks again and congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you the whole Still Timber Sports and thank you to Still Timber Sports and Czech Republic. This is for you. <laughs> All right, so that was Rookie European Championship 2021. I'm so excited. That was just amazing world records and the first time of the springboard. It's just so cool and I'm so excited to be here. And now, back to the studio. Thank you, Lisa. I mean, this was just so emotional. I've got goosebumps literally all <laughs> over my body. I'm so touched. He was so happy. Yeah, I, oh. he was he was uh, he was being a bit misty up there yes. on stage, but I mean, you know, absolutely <laughs> correct. Why not? I mean, yeah. he wasn't even supposed to come to this competition. This he was a so last insane. minute addition yeah. because of injury, and uh, you see what happened there. I mean, it's anybody's game once you're in the middle of it, and he did a great job today. Fantastic result for the Czech Republic and Matthias Klima. And big congratulations for, for him taking the gold medal and a couple of tears down the sure. face. Good job. Yes, yes, he did such a good job. Well, this was now the Rookie European Championship 2021. Was it ever? Yes, yes. <laughs> and we won't stop here. It will continue in just a few hours at 7 p.m. with the European Trophy. Same place, different time, but it will be very exciting as well. And afterwards, like there is a, still a few competitions following in the summer. The European Nations Cup on the 7th of August, the Austrian Pro Championship on the 8th of August, the German Pro Championship on the 20th, 21st, excuse me, and then the 28th of August, the Nordic Pro Championship is gonna follow. I hope that the European Trophy is going to be as exciting and as with as many world records and personal bests as this just was. Yeah, I mean, the trophy is a completely different animal as far as format is concerned. One of my favorite formats. You'll find out more about that later. But in the meantime, we can be really, really happy about how this rookie competition went down. It was just amazing. And uh, good things to come for the future of Steel Timber Sports because of these guys. Well, we hope that you've enjoyed watching this as much as we did. And we'll thank you for watching and hopefully see you soon at 7 p.m. And well, enjoy the highlights of the day, as you just said. Bye. See you soon.